So today we're going to talk about chiral compounds and assigning whether the chiral compound is in the R conformation or the S conformation. So this is our IUPAC nomenclature. So this is a model, okay? So just to remind you how we draw these 3D structures in a 2D representation. So we've got our tetrahedral shape, so we've got three going down on a slight pyramid and we've got one being straight up. So when we have this tetrahedral shape, we have some of these going to the back and some going to the front. So when we write it out, we put the ones with the big fat line is coming out towards you and the ones with the dashed line is going into the plane. So into the page or the whiteboard, depending on what you're looking at. Okay, so when we rotate these molecules, remember single bonds have free rotation. So we've got free movement at all times around these bonds. So if I want to flip a molecule, um, so say this is, let's put this one here, so say this black one is my hydrogen and I want to put it into the back side, then I just keep one still and then all three of those will move over one position. Okay, so again if I had the hydrogen um, let's say it's in the top position and I want to put it into the back position, I move it backwards one and they all rotate up one. So I'll explain why that's important in a minute. So the process for, for assigning R and S conformation, firstly you need to think about the Hahn and Gold prelog rules and work out which one has the highest priority and which one has the lowest priority. So we number them one, two, three and four because a chiral compound has four different groups attached. So looking at this structure here, the first rule in the Harning Gold prelog rules is to look at the directly bonded atoms. So in this case, we've got an oxygen, a carbon, a chlorine, and a hydrogen, and think about the weight of them. So I do molecular weight because it's the easiest, but normally you do the um, number of protons. But I, I seem to remember the molecular weight, so I'll go with molecular weights for this ex explanation. So carbon sits around about 12, oxygens 16, chlorines 35.45, and hydrogens 1. So you can see clear, clearly chlorine has the highest molecular weight, so it would be the highest priority. Oxygen at 16 would come in at number 2. Carbon would be 3, and hydrogen would be 4. Now, it can get a little bit more complicated. There's two more rules. So if you're looking at this and hypothetically this one was a CH3 and this one didn't have the oxygen but it was CH2, CH3, you look at the first bonded one, so the, the carbon directly bonded to the carbon, and you'd say, okay, well that one's the same. So you look at the next bond over and you see where there's a difference between them and if there is a difference you go for the one with the higher mass. So this one here we have carbons the first bond, then we have three hydrogens versus two hydrogens plus a carbon. So this one here has two hydrogens plus a carbon, so it has a higher weight than three hydrogens because we know hydrogens are one each, whereas carbons are 12. So we've got 12, 13, 14 versus three. So you work your way out until you get a difference in the weight. Another thing to consider when you're following these rules is if you have a COOH group, so we know this is a carboxylic acid and if I was to draw out the actual bonds it would look like this. When I'm counting, the, say this is bonded to my central carbon that I'm looking at, um, so when this is bonded to that central carbon, I've got two bonds going to one oxygen and a third bond going to another oxygen. So I actually count the second stage of this as one, two, three oxygens. So I count every single bond going to the oxygens. So although it looks like you've only got two, in these rules here, we've actually counted it three times. Okay, so once you work out your order, you then want to make sure that number four is got, has got the dashed line. So it's going into the page or into the whiteboard. So sometimes you might need to rotate the molecule for this. So then you, once hydrogen is in the background, you then go for your arrows, you connect one to two, two to three, three to one. And then you look at it and you go, well, is that going clockwise or anti-clockwise? So if it's clockwise, it would be R. 
and if it's anti-clockwise, it would be S. So this one here is in a clockwise direction, so it would be an R, okay? So this has an R um, chiral carbon in the center of it. Okay, with this example here, we have an OH, a hydrogen, a CH2OH, and a CH3. So you'll notice that this CH3 is written in reverse. So because it's on the other side of the molecule, we write it as the carbon that's bonded to that carbon, and then we write the H3. So we show the, the order of bonding within the molecule. So before I start assigning my 1, 2, 3, 4s, what I might do is rotate this molecule so it's in the right conformation, so that the hydrogen is going into the, um, into the whiteboard or into the page, and the CH3 or the OH is coming out. Okay, So we want to get the, the hydrogen, which is our fourth group, going into the page. So if I've got my molecule here, so this is my OH, this is my CH2OH, so they're in the plane. I've got my CH3 going backwards and I've got my hydrogen going forward. So if I rotate that one over, then my hydrogen will be going back in. I'll have my um, CH3 going up and then my OH being forward. And this one stays in exactly the same spot. So I'll write that out. So when I've rotated this one, I will have my CH3 going up, my hydrogen going back, my OH, and my CH2OH. Okay, so when we've rotated this molecule, you won't always have a model available. So there's a little bit of a trick to remembering how to do it. So your CH2OH, because it's in the plane, it can stay same and the other ones can rotate over one. So if you want to push the hydrogen into the back, you're going to be moving the molecule this way. So the hydrogen will go to the CH3, the CH3 will go to the OH spot, and the OH will come down to the hydrogen spot. So you just easily rotate that over one spot. So you, you end up with this one. So now we've got it in the right um, configuration, we can then assign our orders. So going for the highest order here, we will have our oxygen that comes out at 16. And then we've got an example where we've got two carbons that are bonded. So remember, when we have two carbons, we need to work our way out. So the next bond is three hydrogens versus two hydrogens and an oxygen. So because we have the oxygen rather than the hydrogen in that third position, this one would be number two. This one would therefore be three. And this one would come out at four. Okay, so then linking them up, one to two, two to three, leave out four, and then we go three to four, and we have a anti-clockwise, so it would be an S confirmation on that one. Now if I look at the original one before I did the flipping, if you're finding the flipping very challenging, there's a little bit of a shortcut that we can do. So if we've got our CH2, OH, CH3, H, this one would be our one, two, three, four. Okay, so now what we want to do is connect our one to two, our two to three, and then our three back down to one. And you can see that's in an R confirmation. So you can see that is in a clockwise, so it's an R confirmation. Now because hydrogen is not in the back, if we were to rotate that, we would be switching the confirmation and it would force it into an S position. So if you work it out in the, um, the way that it originally is and hydrogen's coming out to the front or it's in the, in the plane of the paper, when you work that out, the answer would be the opposite to what you work out. So you can work it out the way it's presented to you in the question and know that it will be the opposite or you can just rotate it in your mind and draw down the structure on your bit of paper and then assign it that way. So there's a few options uh, for going about those types of problems and again the strategy that you would choose would be the one that feels more comfortable to you.